Hello, and welcome back to uh, SYD 552, Computational Neuroscience. This is Lecture 7 on Parameter Search for Artificial Neural Networks. In the scheme of the course, uh, we're still dealing at a higher level of abstraction, but primarily we're looking at, at networks. Um, information from, uh, for parameter search can be found in the Deep Learning book in Chapter 11. Uh, as well as uh, some websites that we will reference in the slides. We're going to break this lecture up into three videos. The first one will motivate the problem. The second one will cover algorithms for parameter search, which is to say trying to find good parameters for neural networks that aren't the weights. And then uh, we'll take a step up a level and we'll try and optimize the architecture for the algorithm. Excuse me, the architecture for the neural network. That we're trying to uh, trying trying to train to do some task. So let's start by motivating the parameter search uh, problem. If we take a simple multi-layer perceptron, there are a lot of parameters to tune. Um, well, I say a lot. There's at least six parameters to tune. For example, the number of hidden nodes, the regularization term if we're using regularization in the uh, in the training algorithm, what transfer function we're using, um, the learning rate, uh, the, the momentum term, how much momentum uh, previous updates and the current update are, are weighed, and the batch size, amongst other things. And this is, this is from a very simple two-layer network. We have um, six parameters at least. Uh, there are, technically speaking, an infinite number of learning rates, uh, regularization values or, or numbers of hidden nodes that we could apply. Now, granted, a lot of this space is, is not going to be useful, uh, but the fact is that the potential space is quite large. And this is, this is a problem on top of the problem of trying to find the correct weights to use in the multilayer perceptron. Um, and what we can realize is that the performance of this network uh, can be viewed as a function of the parameters. If we have a particular training set of data and we have our learning rule and our, our architecture, you know, two-layer, two multi-layer perceptron with the weights and biases, we can specify how it will learn. Uh, we can view how it will learn as a function of the extra parameters. And so here we have a, a cartoon of a a surface plot or the contours of a surface plot of the validation accuracy as a function of the learning rate here on the x-axis and the number of hidden units here on the y-axis. And what, what we really want to do is coming into a problem, we don't know what this surface looks like, and we want to find the point in this space, you know, in this case it's somewhere up here, that's the, the maximum validation accuracy. Uh, and, and so our job is to find settings for these parameters that maximize this validation accuracy. So specifically, we want to determine the parameters above and beyond the synaptic weights that improve the performance, but we want to do it without overfitting. And this is something we covered in the previous lectures that take, for example, the, the number of nodes in the hidden layer. If you make that arbitrarily large, you can get, practically speaking, you know, almost perfect performance on your training data, but you will then overfit the training data and it'll perform poorly uh, uh, beyond that. Which is why we the previous uh, slide showed a plot of the validation performance instead of the validation accuracy instead of just the training accuracy. Um, and what the algorithms we're going to talk about in this lecture break down into a very simple uh, prototype: is that the first is you, you know you select parameters you want to test, you test the network, and by test it I mean instantiate a network using the parameters, so the the number of uh, number of, of nodes in the hidden layer, uh, and then you train it using the learning rate that you specify and the regularization term, and then you, you see what the validation performance was at the end, and then you determine what parameters you want to use next. So to, to define this uh, more like code, we have some parameter search algorithm, which will explore a space of parameters, 
And as long as we're, we haven't decided to stop for whatever criteria we choose to decide to stop, we will take the parameters, make the model, fit the model, uh, record the performance if it's, if it's an improvement in performance, and then we'll update our search um, and try and loop back and try the next set of parameters. But then there's the question of why not just search for the parameters ourselves? This is something we can do manually. We can <clears throat> test a test a you know a number of hidden layers, test a learning rate, and try these different combinations until we uh, find something that looks good. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, especially if you're using a smaller network or a less complicated network. But it is uh, dull and boring and computers are great at doing tedious computations. In fact, that is exactly what they are invented for. So we might as well use them for that. Um, and secondly, we want to ensure that we properly and efficiently explore the space of, of possible networks or possible parameter settings in the network. Um, and, you know, there is always the risk uh, of, you know, of human error, focusing on the wrong parameter, forgetting that you tried one combination and so you're duplicating a lot of work. Uh, so we, again, we might as well use the computer to do it. And furthermore, we can use tools from optimization to try and do the job and hopefully more efficiently than we might do uh, ourselves, uh, you know, typing away at a keyboard. In the next video, we are going to discuss uh, some parameter search algorithms.